So here we have our result for our one sample uh, chi-squared analysis of PREFS AB, and I wanted to show you the notation with which you report a chi-square result like this. Um, so here I've written our data table, just so we remember what the analysis was over, PREFS AB. And I'll circle some parts here. This is the chi-squared symbol, and it's a, a Greek letter chi, and you can uh, find it on your computer. You'll see it looks similar to an X, but it's different. This, the squared uh, symbol is, is there uh, by convention. Um, this first item, and you, you can make these subscripts in parentheses or you can make them uh, full size. It's really kind of up to you. People do both. But this is the degrees of freedom. And the chi-squared uh, distribution, uh, and therefore test, only has one degree of freedom. So uh, that's what's there. But along with that, after a comma, uh, you'd report uh, the number of cases or the number of, of measures or data points. We had 60 respondents, 60 subjects here, and they gave us a preference, so n equals 60, and, and that's where we'd put our n. Then we have uh, on the main line again, full size, an equal sign for the result of the test. This is the, uh, the test st statistic, statistic, there we go, and uh, that's the chi-squared value, uh, which is the result, and corresponds to, along with its the number of cases and degrees of freedom produces for us a p-value, um, which here you can see is less than 0.05. Now a note about reporting p-values, um, it's not uh, typical that you'd put what p equals exactly. Uh, no one cares, it's not important. So for practical purposes, we just want to know uh, uh, if it's uh, less than 0.05 or maybe less than 0.01. Uh, in fact, the list of p-values that you really might report I think if, if they're significant would be uh, less than 0.05, uh, less than 0.01, less than 0.001, and less than 0.0001. Um, and that set really is kind of enough. Uh, you don't need to get more fine grain than that. That's certainly plenty. Some people only report point less than 0.05, and that's fine too. Uh, for p-values between 0.05 and 1.1, uh, uh, sometimes these are of interest, they're, they're often given uh, the name a trend uh, or a kind of marginal result. Um, they're not statistically significant, but they may still be of interest. It may be that with uh, more data, more subjects, more responses in our case for this study, uh, it, it may be in fact uh, a trend that would head towards statistically significant. Uh, but um, some people find those of interest and sometimes they're called trends. Uh, be careful about whether or not you, you kind of treat those as if they're statistically significant because they're really, they're really not, uh, and, uh, they, but they may be of interest and point the way towards something uh, that you want to look into further. Now, what happens for p-values that are greater than 0.05, certainly that are greater than 0.1? How do we report those? Well, for p that's greater, let's say, than 0.05, meaning non-significant, non-statistically significant. Uh, we don't actually report the exact p-value. We don't, we don't write the exact p-value. Frankly, no one really cares for a non-significant result exactly what the p-value is. It, it just doesn't matter and it's not much of a signal of anything. It's important to remember not to really interpret p-values as, as effect strength, as the size of the effect. There are other statistics for that called um, the uh, effect size statistics. Uh, and uh, p-values are, are not to be taken as effect sizes. So when we have a p-value that's greater than 0.05, we simply report it as an ns for non-significant, and often it's italicized. So in this example here, let's say that uh, it was non-significant. We'd have our statistic with a comma and then ns for non-significant, and that's all we'd say. Uh, and uh, it's important to remember something about non-significant results. Significant results tell us there is a statistically significant difference between things we're comparing. But a non-significant result does not tell us there's no difference between things we're comparing. In fact, it only tells us that there was not a detectable difference with the data that we had. Whether there's a real difference depends only on the data we can analyze. And a non-significant result may just mean we didn't have enough data 
to detect a difference. It doesn't mean that two things are equal uh, or that, that, they're, they're, that they're the same. It just means we couldn't detect a difference. So the result was not detectably different. The factors were not detectably different. Uh, they were non-significantly different. That's not the same thing as they're the same. So keep that in mind. That's a very important point when you're interpreting and reporting uh, these kinds of results.